Well, a very good morning to you, wherever it is that you're following uh, this particular engagement from. I just want to hear from us uh, whether or not you can hear me clearly. Uh, so let me just get to hear from you. Can you hear me? Uh, if you can, please comment on the chat box or drop an emoji, a thumbs up. Shabana, yes, thank you. Uh, are you able to get me clearly from where it is that you're listening to us from? Laura is saying, yes, let me see the feedback. Amos, John, yes, Eunice, thank you very much. Willis Sobat, I see you, thank you. Um, Peter, thank you. CD saying we can hear you, thank you very much. And even as you continue, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, James, Joe, loud and clear. I'm glad you can get me loud and clear. We are uh, Brian Aesho, I hope I got the pronunciation right. And even as you're telling me whether or not you can hear us clearly, Mark, thank you very much. And a happy customer, it's it's called CS Week, Customer Service Week, Omolo Vincent. We can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. And um, just comment and tell us from which part of the country you are getting us from. I'm very pleased to inform us that we are not only live on Zoom, but we are we are also on KRA TV and we are streaming live on KRA TV. Um, I'm told we have quite a number of people who've already joined us live. Uh, Mukami saying that you can hear me. Thank you so much, Dennis. Uh, Nairobi, Leonard from Thika. Okay, please represent your county and the part of the country that you're hearing us uh, from. Okay, Limuru, uh, this is Eric, loud and clear. Thank you, thank you very much. Let me get to here. Uh, Backlist Plaza, thank you. Gasho is in Nairobi. Nakuru Kitale, David Diru is in Kitale. Kangundo, this is Miriam. Vincent, all the way from Rongai, thank you so much. Uh, Maggie is from Kajiado County, thank you so much. Alice, right here in Nairobi, thank you for. Uh, Shabana is in Watamu. Lunga Lunga, thank you very much. Kabuchi Kiambu, uh, all right. This is in Karen. Peter is all the way from Kisumu. Esther is in Kitui, there is Ukunda, Kericho, Dubai, Joseph, how is Dubai? Uh, Omola Vincent is in South Sea, Nairobi. Okay, Najma is in Lamu, Migori, Jackie, you say you're getting us loud and clear, I'm happy to hear that. There is a person listening to us from India. Okay, how is India? All right, we see uh, Frank is in Rongai, okay. Nixon is in Rongo. I see uh, all parts of the country are very well represented. Uh, let me just get to hear from a few of us. Edward is saying live from Eldoret. How is Eldoret? Was it uh, rainy as it was right here in Nairobi? Uh, Dubai is really hot. Okay. <laughs> Kirinyaga Road. All right. Thank you. I'm happy to see the parts of the country that you're joining us. Uh, from Moranga, Patrick is right. Uh, our neighbors at Moranga. And another Patrick is in industrial area. Okay. Uh, even as you continue to tell me which parts of the country and even of the world you're tuned in uh, from, my name is Brenda. Uh, Brenda from Tax Education uh, at uh, Kenya Revenue Authority. Today I have such a wonderful lineup. And uh, let me just begin by wishing all of you a happy customer service week. Indeed at KRA, we celebrate not only one week, but we celebrate the entire month. Um, and I know this week we had quite a number of activities happening in the Southern region in Mombasa where we had our lounge, but not only in Mombasa, across the country, if you have visited our offices, Grace from Kisumu, thank you. If you have visited our offices, I know you might not have left our offices empty handed. Uh, you can share some photos where you got some goodies from our offices. Um, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much. I just see your comments in the chat box and I, Kigali, we have someone all the way from Rwanda as well. Uh, today is such a wonderful day. I see we have so many people from across the world and even the country. Uh, as I was saying, the customer service week for us is so important such that we take a whole month to celebrate you, our taxpayers. And we have lined up a series of events that are going to take place from this week uh, all the way through to the end of October. And among such activities that we are going to have are very interactive tax talks that we will have every Thursday, beginning today. Today is the very first Thursday. 
So uh, moving forward the rest of the month, every Thursday we have uh, topics that are geared towards celebrating you our taxpayers. And I know you want to stay tuned and learn what it is that we have in store for you today. I want to very quickly move on. Uh, thank you, I have a wonderful team from KRA TV that is right here with us. And they'll be posting the link on the chat box uh, so that you can share the link far and wide for those that may not be able to catch us here in Zoom as we continue with our sensitization today. They can uh, stream live from KRA TV or they are able to actually get the link later and actually get to watch. And I want to know who is following us live. I'll be appreciating you shortly, those that are tuned in live. Uh, I want to just go straight ahead first and acknowledge our very able panelists who are here with us, our speakers. I have two speakers today who are joining us uh, live. Kimeo Rebecca is live from Masaku. <laughs> Everyone wants to represent where they are coming from. All right, that is very good. I will keep acknowledging you as we go on. But I want to give an opportunity, first and foremost, uh, to our speakers today to just introduce themselves. I want to start with Mr. Nicholas. I know he can hear me, and uh, we will not only be hearing him, but we'll also get to see his face, Nicholas. Um, are we able to see you and hear you and hear your voice as well? Yes, yes, we can see you. Yes, How... Brenda, yes, Brenda. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning to you. How is your morning? How are you doing? I'm doing fine. My name is Nicholas Kimutai. Yes. I'm KRA, working at Intelligence Investigations Department. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Nicholas, what can we expect? Uh, what will you be taking us through uh, today, eventually, when you know we get to hearing from you? Yes, today we, we look at ethics and integrity within the organization mm -hmm. and what KRA is doing in streamlining ethics and maybe corruption issues and any other malpractices. And also lastly, we look at our national values as a country and what is our expectation or what do we expect from our taxpayers. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> Laura, thank you. Thank you. You know, I was going on and on. I did not know that my microphone was actually on mute. Thank you, Jeff Muchuka, for letting me know. Joseph, yes, yes, yes. I hope you can hear me now. You should be able to hear me now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As I was saying, um, I don't know whether you have heard about the KRA tax amnesty. Have you heard about the amnesty or is it something that you're hearing today for the first time? Do you know what it is about? Do you know how you can take advantage of the KRA tax amnesty? Well, we have a very able panelist uh, joining us today to discuss all things that you need to know about the KRA tax amnesty. Nyakio, thank you. I know you can tell, uh, you've told me that you're able to hear me. Thank you so much all the way from Karen. Now, I want to introduce my second panelist uh, for today. And even as I introduce her, I'd like to know, what is it that you would like to know about the KRA tax amnesty? Yes, Joseph is saying amnesty is forgiveness of our tax sins. <laughs> yes, indeed it is. Um, I am just giving our panelists the right to unmute. Miriam, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you clearly. And we can see you looking lovely. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. 
Karibu sana. I just want to give you an opportunity uh, to introduce yourself first and tell us who you are. We know you as Miriam Wairimo, but maybe you can tell us uh, which office you're from and what exactly uh, do you do so that uh, they know we picked the right person to talk about the tax amnesty today. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Miriam Wairimo uh, from Corporate Taxpayer Accounts Management Division. This is the division that handles debt and refund issues. I'm the head of reforms and automation and currently the head of the Amnesty Project. Welcome. I'll be taking you through the, everything you need to know about Amnesty and I'll be willing to take any questions that you may have about it uh, so that everybody leaves this meeting satisfied and happy and ready to take up the amnesty. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Miriam. I just want to give you an opportunity now to just make arrangements to share the screen so that we can begin uh, the sensitization today. But as you have heard for yourself, she's um, uh, running with the Amnesty team. She's actually the team lead and she's the best person to tell you how you can take advantage of the uh, amnesty that is currently ongoing. Uh, let me just stop her video for a moment to give her an opportunity to set up the presentation so that we can begin uh, today's uh, sensitization. Miriam is running with a task force that is tasked with executing the amnesty program. And uh, she's very well versed with all things amnesty. And so your questions are directed to the right person today. And I see, I've seen your number of questions coming in uh, very, very swiftly from the likes of Gladys Kip Kipke Chem. Uh, Gladys is asking, how do we apply for the tax amnesty? Very good questions. We have Mitesh Pabari also with questions. Okay. Let me get to see these questions coming in. Just a minute, I'm just seeing uh, questions that, yes, Moses has a question and a comment as well. Uh, Sharon Angano as well. Okay, I was just going through your questions. Henry Sang is saying, uh, will you please send uh, the slides after the presentation? Don't worry. Like I mentioned, we are available on KRA TV, and I believe the link has been shared on the chat box and will continually be shared on the chat box. Please have a look and just confirm that you're able to um, access the presentation through KRA TV. Just give me a moment to assist to our panelists. I'll be back with you in a minute. All right, I appreciate the questions that are coming in. I'm uh, just getting our speaker on board, but I see Dano Ketch with the likes, uh, with questions on the carry tax amnesty. How do we apply for the tax amnesty on uh, ITAX? Thank you for your question. Hudson is saying, do we also have to apply for the waiver of interest and penalties uh, where there was no principal tax? Okay, I think that is as at 31st December. 2022, uh, very good questions coming in. Hello, how can we apply for the amnesty on interests and penalties? Uh, somebody's saying, I just paid the principal amount. 
uh, someone, someone else is saying if one has uh, previous tax credits, but with penalties, does the amnesty still apply? Keep your questions coming. They're all going to be uh, addressed very soon by our panelists. Miriam, I just want to know that you can hear us. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Only that right. I'm not able to share my screen. Kindly enable me to share my screen. All right, I think I have given you the right. You should be able to share now. Can you uh, just try and uh, share now? Yes, 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 we can We can see your presentation. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, maybe you can consider putting it uh, in a slide uh, format so that we can proceed. Is that okay? Very good, very good. Uh, can I hand over now the, the session to you to proceed from here? Oh, yes. Thank you, thank you. I'm available for any support, but our taxpayers are eagerly uh, waiting to hear what you have to say about the amnesty on interest and penalties. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, welcome once again to today's session. I'll be taking you through the tax amnesty and how we are going to implement the tax amnesty that uh, is starting from 1st of September 2023. And uh, before I start taking you through the tax amnesty, I wish to take you to the background of how it came to be. Uh, before taxpayers, if you have interest and penalties, the only relief you could get for you not to pay the interest and penalty was for you to apply for a waiver. And uh, over time, taxpayers used to apply for waivers, but because of the strict conditions that had been provided in the law under Section 3089 of the Tax Procedures Act, most of the waivers would en end up being rejected. Over time, we saw accumulation of many waiver tax and where taxpayers would reject as per the provisions of the law only for the taxpayer to apply again. Over time, taxpayers stopped using their pins because they uh, accumulated a lot of interest and penalties. And uh, we felt it, we needed to give a relief to the taxpayers to give them a second chance. And we are calling the tax amnesty, we are telling the taxpayers, we are giving them a fresh start, we are giving them a second chance for them to go back to do their businesses without any fear and without the stress that comes with accumulated interest and penalties. And that is how the tax amnesty came to be. And uh, the tax amnesty uh, was introduced uh, by Section 37 of the Tax Procedures Act. And uh, I want first to take you through the what I'll take you through today in my presentation. I'll cover the introduction about uh, the tax amnesty I'll also talk about the publicity, what we are doing about uh, the tax amnesty to ensure taxpayers come to know about it. And then we'll talk about procedures and processes of um, the review of those processes of uh, amnesty. And lastly, I'll take you through the just a minute. Okay. So to start us off, I want us to first go through the introduction. And uh, the tax amnesty was introduced by Finance Act 2023. And uh, it introduced section a new section. It inserted section 37E to the Tax Procedures Act. And it also deleted section 89 and section 37 of the Tax Procedures Act. Section 37E is the one now gives requirements and everything to do with tax amnesty. Section 89 is the section that used to give taxpayers waivers and section 37 used to give taxpayers write-off. Write-off used to happen where taxpayers are not in a position to pay, either because the cost of collection is higher than the, the debt we are pursuing or the taxpayer has gone unknown. There are many reasons that a taxpayer we would use the write-off but uh, from this year, after the introduction of Finance Act 2023, Section 89 and Section 37 have been deleted, meaning there is no waiver going forward and there are no write-offs going forward. Uh, the amnesty is applicable to taxpayers under two categories. 
the first category of taxpayers who will benefit from the tax amnesty is taxpayers without principal taxes for periods prior to 31st December 2022. So when we look at the amnesty, we need to take note of some very important days. First one being 31st December 2022, and that is the period for which the amnesty applies to. That is 31st December 2022 going backwards, all those periods will qualify for amnesty, but under two categories. The second date that is very important when it comes to amnesty is 1st September 2023. And this is the date when the amnesty started. So since we started amnesty, we have just only one month has lapsed, meaning the amnesty is pretty new and it will be running for 10 months up to 30th of June 2024. So the other date that is very important, we need to take note of is 30th of June 2024. So the amnesty for taxpayers, they will qualify under two categories. The first one, they will not need to apply and the second category they will have to apply for the amnesty. For the first category that will not need to apply, these are taxpayers that did not have principal taxes for periods prior to 31st December 2022. So when you look at your ledger and you cannot find any principal taxes for those periods, you don't need to apply for the amnesty. We will do something in the system and the interest and penalties will be removed from your ledger. The second category is taxpayers who will need to apply for the amnesty. The second category are taxpayers who have principal taxes in their ledger that they wish to pay and then benefit from the amnesty. For the second category, number one, you have to apply for the amnesty. And number two, you have to give a plan on how to clear the debt. But once you give a payment plan on how to clear the debt, you must clear the debt by 30th of June 2024 before the end of the amnesty period. So the two categories kindly take note of that. The first category will not need to apply, that is for periods that don't have principal taxes. The second category will have to apply, and these are for periods that have principal taxes. But when we talk about the amnesty, we are looking at it per period. It's not per pin. And why is it important for me to insist on the per period? It's because You'll find a taxpayer who has debt in one period and another period they only have interest and penalties. So when you're making the amnesty application, you will only make application for the periods that have principal taxes because the periods without principal taxes will automatically be removed through the amnesty. So when you're applying, kindly just pick the periods that have principal taxes. We have already delivered the system solution and it will also only show you the periods that have principal taxes. This does not mean the periods without principal will not take it. You will get amnesty, but you will not need to make an application. And uh, when we say the, it's also per period, for periods prior to the 1st December 2023, this also includes additional assessments that are likely to be raised within the year. So assuming there is an audit that was going on on your farm and then an assessment is raised within the day, the year, maybe it concluded today and it's the audit period is prior to 31st December 2022, you as a taxpayer will also benefit from the amnesty if number one, you apply, number two, you give a plan on how to clear the debt and three, you make sure you pay the debt by 30th of June 2024. So it does not exclude assessments that are raised within the year. Another category that will also benefit are taxpayers that are, are going through objection. If a taxpayer objects to a debt, it goes through a process. The taxpayer can go through IRO, uh, that is independent review of objections. The taxpayer can go to the court. You might decide to take your court there. You might decide to go to ADR, that is alternative dispute resolution. So if your case is already undergoing the objection process and the process is concluded in the favor of KRA and then you come and request for the amnesty, you will qualify.
Um, I think uh, Miriam, I don't know whether uh, you're able to hear us. I'm you sorry. Only we... qualify if you make the application Miriam, and you clear I'm... the date by time. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to cut you short a bit. Uh, there's a place we lost you for a moment. Uh, yes, I can see even now uh, Vincent Omolo is uh, concurring that we lost you at some point. Can you, can you get us? So I'm sorry about that. I think we might have lost our panelist at some point, uh, even as she was talking about uh, the carry tax amnesty. Yes, Yvonne Mulua, I concur. Uh, let me see, Joshua Adunga also has feedback for us. Um, yes, I think a majority of us are just commenting to the fact that we lost Miriam. Worry not, uh, we are getting her back uh, on track. I think uh, she should be joining us uh, shortly. Um, yes, 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 yes. She She's right back. Miriam, you can hear us? Yes. Apologies. Myself and a few other taxpayers also lost you. Yes. Apologies. Apologies for that. I think uh, it now is, I'm clear. Yes, now okay. you're clear. We can even see you. Thank you. Please just uh, backtrack okay. a bit and just uh, start off from uh, um, just a few you know, paragraphs back in your statement. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay. I'll start with the assessment. So this is a call for taxpayers who maybe are undergoing audit. If you can fast track the conclusion of the audit, and how can you do this? If there are documents that are needed to complete the audit, kindly facilitate the provision of these documents so that the audit can be concluded and you can take advantage of the tax amnesty. So if you are undergoing an audit, if you provide the documents in good time, the audit is concluded in good time, you can apply for the amnesty and you will be forgiven of any interest and penalties for periods that uh, you had not paid that tax. The same applies to objection cases. If there are cases that you had get taken to court, as you know, the court system, you cannot predict how long the case will stay there. If you feel this is a case that you can lose, you are not very sure about the final decision, you can make the decision to withdraw the case and apply for the amnesty because you'll be forgiven all the interest and penalties that would accrue from there, that uh, debt. So this is a call and encourage you first track the conclusion of your audit and also if there are court cases or objection cases, you first track the conclusion of the same so that you can take advantage of the tax amnesty. Uh, debt accruing, from 1st January 2023, do not qualify for amnesty nor waiver. So this is something we need to take note of so that as you start, you continue trading, you need to be just uh, plan well so that you don't accrue new debt because any new debt going forward that you accrue will attract interest and penalties and will not be subject to amnesty. Given section 89 has already been deleted that provided for waivers. So kindly be, try to be compliant so that you don't miss out on the amnesty and also because you will have to pay the entire interest and penalties for periods from 1st of January 2023. Uh, there is a video here on uh, the president, our president. This is an initiative that is using to support the local Mwanainji because this initiative uh, the tax amnesty encourages people to start using your PIN. If there is a PIN that you had stopped using because it had accrued a lot of interest and penalties, this is time you filed those returns and you got a waiver of all interest and penalties through the amnesty program. Uh, we have already done the following. We have uh, shared taxpayers' guideline on the tax amnesty, of which I'll be taking you shortly through that. And uh, you can also get the guidelines through the link during towards the end of my presentation. I'll share the link with you through the chat so that you can access the taxpayer guidelines. We have also done a public notice. I believe most of you might have seen them. The public notice was shared uh, on 1st September 2023, communicating to taxpayers about the tax amnesty and telling them to take advantage of that. It was also published on my government on 5th September 2023. We have also been doing email communications on the same 
with the first batch having been sent on 11th and another one on 15th September. So keep on checking your emails. You'll get a lot of communication on the TACTA Missy. And this is a call to taxpayers. When you look at the email, we have noted a very high uh, default rate, not really default rate, but bounce back rate, where we send email, but they don't get to the uh, the final taxpayer, finally to the taxpayer, meaning either they have given the wrong email and uh, it's a call to all taxpayers to update their details. So that when we get such good communication about things that can really be of help to taxpayers, we don't miss out on such offers. We will also be doing more emails, targeted emails and SMSs, and this will be going out to taxpayers with debt, just encouraging them to take up the amnesty so that they don't uh, incur further interest and penalties come end of the amnesty period. We have also provided a system solution where taxpayers will be able to apply for the amnesty through the ITAC platform. Uh, I'll be taking you through it shortly. I might not take you through the uh, the step by step because uh, unless I get somebody's team, but I'll take you exactly through what you're supposed to do. So the first thing a taxpayer is supposed to do is make an amnesty application for periods that are principal taxes. So if you have a period, when you look at your ledger, you, the taxpayer should first go to their ledger. They open the I page, you log in, the normal way you log in, go check your balances. Any period uh, for periods prior to 31st December 2022, where you find there is a principal tax, those are the periods that will apply for amnesty. But any period after 1st January 2023, you cannot apply for amnesty. So the first thing a taxpayer will be required to do is now make the amnesty application through the ITAC system. Then after that, you will when you open the, the system, you will go under a tab called debt and enforcement. As I take you through, in case you are able to log in to your ITAC page, you will be able to see all those tabs I'm talking about. You go put your PIN, you also enter your password, it will open for you your I page. Then you go under debt and enforcement. Below that, you will find tax amnesty. Once you click under tax amnesty, the system will populate your information. That is your phone number, everything about you. And then down there, you will be able to select the tax obligation. If the obligation you want to apply for amnesty is pay as one, click on pay as one, the system will pull out all the periods that are principal taxes. The only thing you need to do is to add. But uh, just to guide you on, there are some taxpayers, you will find some of the periods have dates that are not valid. And what are some of these invalid debts? You might find that a taxpayer made a payment, but the payment was never updated in the ledger. Maybe there was an agency notice and the banks remitted the money directly to KRA without generating a PRN. That payment will never appear on your ledger. So you will find that you have a debt, but in reality, the debt is not valid. Some other cases of invalid debt is where you find you went through an objection process, the decision was made, and the assessment was revised downwards. But the decision you have in in hard copy says that your assessment of 100 million was reduced to 50 million. But when you go to the ITAC system, you find the system shows the old debt of 100 million, meaning the objection decision was never effected in the system. So as a taxpayer, when you go to your ledger uh, to apply for the amnesty and find some of the periods that have what we call invalid debt, kindly uncheck. Because when you're doing the amnesty application, it checks, it puts a check on all debt that are principal taxes. So if you come across a debt you feel is not valid, uncheck it, then submit. Once you submit, the system will ask you to put the number of installments you want. You can put two, you can put four. The system does not restrict. But the installments you put should not go past the 30th of June 2024. So once you do that and submit, the system will give you a receipt to print and also it will send you a copy of the amnesty application through your email where, where you can refer to the system later. 
there are some conditions that have been put for the amnesty application. One of them is, I'll be sharing with you shortly that, uh, so let me not just take you through it without showing you the form. So after you do the amnesty application, you need to give a plan. So the amnesty application online will serve as both the amnesty application and also as the payment plan application. So once you go, you fill in the periods that you feel the dates are valid, you submit, that will be the payment plan application. I want also to mention something about legacy debt. Legacy debt is debt prior to, let's say 2014. Uh, from 2014 coming forward, we started using the ITAC system. Before that, we used to have another system called legacy. So debt under legacy also qualified for amnesty. And you know you have debt in those periods. That is prior to 2014. You can you also qualify for amnesty for those periods. The periods that don't have principal taxes will get automatic amnesty. For periods that have principal taxes, kindly visit your CSO. You'll be given a plan on how to clear the debt. After you clear the principal taxes, you will benefit from the tax amnesty. Uh, there are also some of the ads we are making to you as taxpayers. Given that some people are aware of the amnesty, others are not aware. You are requested and we are urging you to be our voice out there, to be our champion when it comes to the tax amnesty. Encourage people to take it up because it will be of great benefit to most firms that already have accrued interest and penalties. Uh, there are taxpayers, uh, I've been getting questions on whether taxpayers who do not file return, whether they qualify for the amnesty. Yes, if there are returns that were not filed and then you come and file, it means it will post penalties. So for periods that have only penalties and have no principal taxes, you will also get the amnesty. So if you have a PIN that you have not been using for some time, it is time you filed all those returns it will post, impose penalties on those periods and the system will also remove because this is the amnesty period provided the period does not have principal taxes. The, I also wish to guide you when generating PRN, that is the payment registration number. So generating PRN, I wish to guide you on how to generate so that you don't miss out on the tax amnesty. Uh, when you go to generate a PRN and you enter the entire amount, that is the principal amount, interest, and penalties, it means you don't want the amnesty. So when you're generating a PRN for the amnesty debt, when you want to pay the principal amount, kindly repeat the PRN to the principal amount. We have, however, done an enhancement in the system so that when you're making the payment, you're generating the PRN, it does not pick there. It restricts you to only paying the principal amount. This will only be applicable up to 30th of June 2024, after which the system will go back to normal. When you're paying, you'll have to pay the entire amount, including the interest and penalties. We, I had mentioned today, we, you fast track provision of reconciliation documents. Uh, amnesty will not be given for any period with principal taxes, whether valid or invalid. If you have a period with invalid debt, I've mentioned a few that is taxpayer who made payments, but it is never reflected in our system. Either you did an objection, the decision was never effected in the system, you went through a system issue, there was a challenge with the system that imposed a debt that is not valid, and number four, return amendment. If you did a return amendment that was never concluded, it means you might have a debt in your ledger that is not valid. So in case you have any of the reasons I've mentioned that make debt invalid, you are requested to fast track provision of the documents needed to conclude the process. Because a taxpayer will not enjoy amnesty for any period with principal taxes, whether valid or invalid. If it is a reconciliation case or return amendment case where you revised your, uh, your return downwards, there are documents that are usually requested for evidence as, as to why you revised your, your, your self-assessment downwards, things like that. 
if you first track provision of these documents, the remaining principal taxes, then you pay. It means you can benefit from the tax amnesty. Uh, we also urge taxpayers to remain compliant to avoid accruing new debt. As I've mentioned from 1st January 2023, taxpayers will not be able to benefit from waivers or write-offs. Since the provision for such has been deleted, which was section 89. Um, yes, Miriam, thank you. You're going on very well. I know for just a few minutes we've lost you. So going Miriam, forward, Miriam, you, Miriam, Miriam. So going um, forward we urge you to remain compliant. So that I hope you, you can hear me, Miriam. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. There's a, We've lost you a bit. Uh, there's a moment where when you're mentioning the section, yes, back? when you're talking about the section, uh, there's a Am part we lost you a bit. Yes, you're back, but maybe just move okay. back a bit to when you're talking about the section of the law. There's a part we missed you a bit. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Apologies. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, for the, I was mentioning about uh, the, uh, section 89 and 37 have already been deleted. So from 1st January coming forward, a taxpayer will not be able to apply for waiver. Even for those who used to apply for waiver, when you go to your to your I page, you will not see the waiver application. It has already been disabled. Meaning any interest and penalties accrued from 1st January will not be subject to waiver. You cannot be waived. So we, this is a call to taxpayers to remain compliant so that you don't accrue extra costs as a result of the interest and penalties that will not be subject to waiver or amnesty. Also, I mentioned you consider out-of-court settlements so that you don't prolong the, uh, the court cases or court decisions that will make you lose out on the amnesty. If a case is in court, you cannot control the date the decisions will be made. So for you not to miss out on the amnesty, if you feel as, as a taxpayer, you know these debts are my likely to win, am I likely to lose. If it is a case that you are not very sure about the decision, you can consider out of court an agreement so that you don't miss out on the amnesty. Uh, we also request you to report on any assessment that were concluded and you feel when you look at your ledger, you find that the debts are not the ones that are supposed to be there because this will mean you will miss out on the amnesty. We have also cases of assessments that were raised, but not in the system. Because of one system issue or another, an assessment was never raised in the system. But most of them, the taxpayer has already paid. So in case you have such cases, bring them to the attention of your CSO, that is tax station, and then the officers will facilitate you to ensure the assessments are raised in the system and you don't miss out on the amnesty. I've also mentioned about non-filer. Uh, we encourage you to file because even if you were a non-filer and you come and file now, you will benefit from the amnesty. As I've mentioned, the amnesty is for periods prior to 31st December 2022. So any period, any assessment, whether it is done today or later in the year, as long as for period 31st December and prior, you'll benefit from the amnesty. You can also take advantage and do voluntary disclosure. And uh, these are, uh, you might find a year, like a year 2019, you under declared on some of the taxes. If you come forth and do voluntary disclosure, you'll enjoy the amnesty as long as the payments are made of the principal taxes before 30th of June 2024. So take advantage of this period, do your voluntary disclosures, because you know if you do a voluntary disclosure now, the system automatically imposes interest and penalties for those periods. From when the tax... Uh, Miriam, thank you. We are following very well, keenly. It imposes. Or, but as long as we, we clear the principal taxes, clear the principal taxes before that is okay. We lost you That's a bit, long. Miriam. Can you hear me? Now we can hear you. Yeah, There's apologies. a point we lost you a bit. Maybe you can again just uh, reiterate what you were saying before. Okay. In yes. case you have any apologies for that, uh, in case you have any debt that you need to do voluntary disclosures, kindly disclose now because this is the, your opportunity to 
to be forgiven the interest and penalties that would have arisen from such death. And uh, we have also mentioned about conclu concluded objection decision. If you you were going through an objection, maybe a death, uh, an assessment that it be raised of 100,000, and you have already agreed the correct amount is 50, but you go to your ledger, you have already paid the 50, you go to your ledger, you find it is showing 100,000, kindly bring this to the attention of your office, and then they will facilitate cleaning of the ledger so that you can benefit from the amnesty. And forward all return amendment cases, if you had initiated return amendment that has not been concluded, that has not been effected, kindly we request you to forward it so that you can be facilitated. Before I finish, I wish to take you through the amnesty. I'll take you the manual form. We are no longer using it, but I'll take you through it so that we go through the terms and conditions of the amnesty. And before that, I want also to mention an exclusion. The tax amnesty has some exclusion. Uh, penalties charged under section uh, 85 do not qualify for the tax amnesty. So if you have any penalties that we are charged, that is tax avoidance, they will not qualify for the tax amnesty. So kindly note, uh, any penalties charged under section 85 won't qualify for tax amnesty, and any debt from 1st January 2023 will not qualify for tax amnesty. So give me a minute. I share with you. Uh, Miriam, thank you. Even as you're sharing, uh, just a quick question. Yes. Those that are wondering section mm -hmm. 85, uh, what what is section 85? What does it talk about? Uh, who are these people under section 85 who do not qualify? Okay, section 85 talks about tax avoidance. If uh, you did something and after investigation it was found that you were doing tax avoidance, you will not qualify for tax amnesty. So if you find, uh, but it has to be clear in your ledger. When you go to the ledger, you will find it is very clear. It's written this penalty was charged under section 85. So it, it will not be something that uh, you, it, you will be confused about whether you qualify or not. It is very clear. When you go to your ledger, you'll be able to see whether it is, it is under section 85. Okay, so I'll give, take you through an example. This is an example. Then after this, I'll take you through the, the amnesty application form. It is similar to what we have online. I'll just Take the first example that is taxpayer A. I because I've mentioned amnesty is applicable per period and not per pin. So taxpayer A had VAT and for period January 2020, they were to file by February 2020. And the principal tax due was 200000 the interest charge 2000, penalty is 10, total debt is 212. Then you come to the following year, month, you find February 2020, which was due in March, there is no principal tax, and, but there is interest and penalty. Then you come to Feb 2023, to March, which is uh, due by March 2023, there is no principal tax, but there is interest and penalties. Then the last period is December 2022, that was due by January. I'll use this example to take you through what we mean by amnesty is applicable per period. So for the first period, which is January 2020, since it has principal taxes, if this taxpayer goes to apply for the amnesty, they will need to apply for amnesty for this period because it has principal taxes. For period Feb 2020, they'll not need to apply for amnesty because there's no principal tax and there's only interest and penalty. This will be removed. So you will not need to apply for amnesty for Feb 2020. For February 2023, the taxpayer will not apply for amnesty and will not benefit from amnesty because this is a period outside the amnesty period. 
I said from 1st January 2023, the payers will not get waivers, they will not get amnesty. So Feb 2023, the taxpayer will not apply for amnesty, will also not qualify for any waiver. Now, I want to make clarification on the period December 2022. Uh, some taxpayers have the question whether uh, VAT for December, which was stable in January 2023, qualifies for the amnesty. When you go through the guidelines, it qualifies. And the reason is this. VAT for December was due in December. Tax VAT is due the earlier of, when you look at the VAT Act, it is fixed when VAT is due. It is due the earlier of when the payment is made, when the invoice is issued, when there are conditions that are listed there. So VAT for December was due within the month of December. But the Act goes further to say tax, the commissioner can give the taxpayer extended time to make the payment. So it is only that the commissioner, yes, the VAT was due in December, but the commissioner gave you extended time to make the payment in January. So yes, VAT for December qualifies for amnesty. The same applies to pay as one. And also income tax, as long as the year end is anywhere before 31st December 2022, despite the fact that the balance tax is payable in 2023. So any period, as long as year end is is not past 30, 31st December 2022, you qualify for the amnesty. So this taxpayer A will apply for amnesty for only January 2020 and also December 2022, because those are the periods with principal taxes. For Feb, they will not need to apply since they don't have principal taxes, but KRA will remove the interest and penalties. From Feb 2023, they will not need to apply because that period does not qualify for the amnesty. That was just an example to take you through by what you mean by tax amnesty is applicable per period. Finally, I'll be taking you through the form. We have discontinued use of the form, but uh, from the form, I just want us to go straight to the terms and conditions of the amnesty. Uh, when you apply for the amnesty, these are the terms and conditions that you'll have to adhere to. And the most important ones are, the others are important, but the one that you need to be very keen on is condition number three, which says, where the taxpayer is not able to honor the payment plan agreement, they should seek prior approval from the TSO head before the due date, stating the reason and the proposed date of the next payment. So you might give a payment plan. I've said in the online form, it will ask you the number of installments you want. Once you see the number of installments you want, the system will submit. You will not be required to seek for approval. The system will just submit. But kindly not. As you submit, these are the terms and conditions of your amnesty application. You should not default on the payment plan. And uh, in case you feel you are likely to default on a plan, maybe you were to pay on 20th, you find that you can only make the payment by 25th, kindly consult your TSO before the due date so that you don't default. Because upon default, number five will, will apply. Upon default of the payment plan agreement without acceptable explanation or solution, enforcement measures will be applicable. So we have many enforcement tools that we use, the main one being agency notice. We can close your account to recover the debt because this is provided in Section 42 of the Tax Procedures Act. So kindly, in case you sign for the amnesty and you realize that you are likely to default on a particular month, kindly bring this to the attention of your debt office so that they can restructure it and so that you don't default and then end up being enforced. The same applies to taxpayers who will not apply for the amnesty. There might be taxpayers out there who have debt and will not apply for the amnesty, will not take up the amnesty offer, either maybe because they don't want or others because they are not aware of it, others maybe because they don't have, they feel they don't have the money to clear. Kindly not, the normal debt collection process will, uh, will continue. We will not suspend any debt collection processes will continue and recover the money through the tools that are provided under the Tax Procedures Act. 
so that is it about the amnesty and uh, i will be going through the chat to take any questions and uh, as i do that i will also use the chat to capture some of the the link you can use to access the guidelines and also on KRA website you are able to find the faq the frequently asked questions when it comes to amnesty you'll be able to find them through KRA website so what i've posted there is the link to the guidelines and the next one i'll be posting is a speech which was made by our president calling out to taxpayers to take up the tax amnesty. You can click on any of them, then listen to the, the video. Uh, before I take up the question, uh, any comment before I start taking up the question, kindly use the chat to ask anything you want to ask about the amnesty. You can also anything, any clarification. So I'll start with the top one. Maybe Maybe before you yes. start, Miriam, uh, because now we are going to the Q&A yes. session where uh, we'll get to respond to questions from taxpayers. Uh, hasn't she done justice in terms of the explanation of what amnesty is? Let's just appreciate her first for the session that we have just had. Thank you for those that are uh, giving their hand. Thank you and the thumbs up. Uh, thank you, Cherono Salome. Thank you, Korea. We really need to appreciate Madam Miriam because she has uh, uh, she was very precise. Thank you. That's the kind of feedback that is coming in. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kimeo, Salim, uh, Miriam, all this appreciation is going back to you for, the, for a job that has been well done. Excellent. Uh, in terms of just breaking down what the amnesty is. Uh, somebody says that you have explained it very well. Linda is saying thank you. Um, thank you. And I believe that my, some of the questions, simple and clear. Gabriel is saying, well done. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, remember, Miriam, today we had uh, Mr. Bagat, who was joining us from India, also listening in. We had Joseph, uh, who was joining us from Dubai, listening in. We had a person from Kigali, Rwanda as well. And I know we have others also from other parts of the world. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I see your appreciation. Now, we, uh, Miriam, allow me to pick out the questions to ask you uh, yes. based on yes. uh, the first come, first serve basis. Uh, mm -hmm. There are those questions that came in j even before it got to... Uh, 11. Uh, I think it's only fair enough for us to give them priority to get responses. Yvonne is saying nice work. Thank you. Thank you very much. And clearly you see um, that your explanation has been really, very well received and understood and appreciated. So we want to take the questions very quickly. I just wanted to uh, give a highlight to those that came in quite early as we were starting um, the presentation. And of course, some of them might have been answered in the course of your presentation, uh, but we will move like that in order of priority as to those questions that came in first. Omolo Vincent is appreciating you still. So then I just want to go to the first question. Today, the very first question that we got was a comment from Dennis uh, that came in at around 10.50, where he mentioned that we need to make this simpler, easy to understand uh, the parameters of the amnesty. And I think uh, with your explanation, Jackie is saying very well done, Miriam. I think that has been achieved. Now over to the questions. I just want to read them out for you quickly. And then now you can go to the chat box for those that came in. Um, admin is saying, thank you, Miriam. So the first question that came in was from Mitesh Pabari. Uh, Mitesh was asking, is it the amnesty, is it automatically, uh, whether it's automatically applied to penalties and interest when there is no principal tax owed? Um, oh. I think I think that was the question. Maybe let me just take uh, another question from Mitesh because he had a follow-up question. Also, please find out for me, how long will it take uh, for KRA to waive the penalties is there a time frame so we can begin from there okay thank you mr mitesh yes for periods that don't have principal taxes i will combine that with another question i've just seen where 
somebody was asking whether taxpayers, does it mean taxpayers without principal taxes will not qualify? No. If you don't have principal taxes, you will qualify for amnesty as long as the period only has penalties and interest. So coming back to Mitesh's question, yes, uh, you, do, you will not need to apply, but we are doing something to the system to remove the interest and penalties. Maybe I can take you through the three ways in which we are removing the interest and penalties. For taxpayers with principal taxes in their ledger, the application, the amnesty application will trigger removal of penalties and interest for periods that don't have principal taxes. So the act of application, upon application, if you have periods that did not have principal, you will notice that they, they have been balanced out. The second trigger for amnesty is payment. Upon payment, if you had principal taxes that you needed to pay, upon clearing the principal for that period, per period, you will notice upon period, the payment, it will trigger crediting of your ledger for the period that had interest and penalty. The last one is we are doing something in the back office module where we will clear penalties and interest for taxpayers who don't have any principal taxes. So for taxpayers who already had principal taxes and they apply or they pay, they will notice that the interest have already been cleared. The, hon the only ones that are remaining are taxpayers that did not have principal taxes, but before the end of the month, you will notice that all those periods have been, the debts have been cleared. So we just ask for your patience, but uh, I am I'm confident even within the, this coming, we are likely to have a solution, but just to be on the safe side, before the end of the month, you will find it has been delivered. Thank you. Thank you so much. We keep going with the questions. I have a question here from Mr. And before I ask the question, allow me to play the devil's advocate. Um, principal tax is a word that we have had a lot uh, when talking about the amnesty. For those that perhaps may not really understand what principal tax is, we saw this a lot when we were at the Nairobi ASK show, and I'm glad that we were there with you. Mm -hmm. And somebody was asking, what is this principal tax that you keep talking principal about? Tax. What can, in, in simple okay. terms, yeah. Okay, okay. When we talk about principal tax, this is um, the amount, If uh, let me explain it in two weeks. It can be, let me use the self-assessment. As a taxpayer, when you do your, uh, your account and you say this is the amount I'm supposed to pay to KRA, that is what we call principal taxes. Or as the KRA team audits a taxpayer and they do the account for that, that company, they raise an assessment of an, an amount. That is what we call principal taxes. Now, once you file your return and you file your return late, it attracts penalties and interest. So if you pay late, you will attract interest and penalties. When you file late, you will attract penalties. So those are the penalties and interest. The same applies to a bank loan. The initial amount you're given is a loan, that is what we call, the loan amount, that is what we call penalties or interest. The same applies to taxation. The amount you declare as a taxpayer that you are supposed to pay, or the amount assessed on you as the additional assessment for, as a result of audit, that is what we call principal tax, and the penalties are, it's like imposed on you because of late filing, late payment, or under declaration. So penalties and interest are imposed as a result of late filing, late payment, or under declaration. Either you declare less amount than you were supposed to declare, or you paid less amount than you were supposed to pay. I think that has made it clear on what we mean by principal tax. Thank you. Thank you so much for that explanation. Let's take two other questions. Uh, one is from Brian Omondi, and he's saying, I applied for amnesty for a company and I got an acknowledgement. I think he's referring to waiver. Uh, mm -hmm. How do I pay the principal tax so that the penalties get weighed? How does he pay? And I've seen a similar question. Maybe you can handle them together. Uh, there is somebody here, Technospark. He didn't give a name, but uh, the person says, I was put on VAT special table, uh, and I'm not able to file uh, my VAT returns. 
And the question is, can I get amnesty? Uh, I think on the, can I get amnesty for I have a potential to generate uh, revenue on VAT? Yes, that, those okay. are the two questions. Yes. Okay, I start with Brian, who asked, uh, they applied for amnesty for company and got the acknowledgement number. Now, uh, when you apply for the amnesty online, you will notice that the date for first installment is the date you're making the amnesty application. So kindly take note that for you to avoid default, try and make payment of the first installment is, is captured in the amnesty application. So what, how do you go about making the payment? It is not different from the way you make normal payments for taxes. You just go generate payment, you go to your iPage, you go to payment window, you generate a PRN. Just the normal way you generate. Just go generate a PRN. Uh, I mentioned that we have done an enhancement so that you don't cut an amount higher than the principal tax. So just go generate a PRN, make the payment. Upon payment, you'll notice the interest and penalties are disappearing for every period that the principal has already been cleared. So it's as simple as that. I was put on special table, not so. Okay, I'll mention something about special table. Special table is uh, is like we suspended use of pins for a certain category of taxpayers. And number one is taxpayers who are filing without paying, taxpayers who were nil filers. We find every time you've been filing a new return, others who were put on special table were non-filers if we find you have a, an obligation that you don't pay at all and number four is taxpayers where we found there are pins were being used by other taxpayers to claim so we call them missing traders and finally the other category that was put under special table are taxpayers who were not complied with eating the requirement so if you are on special table uh, we have guidelines within that have been given to staff on how to treat penalties and interest that accrue during the period you were on special table. So for taxpayers who were filing nil and we are put on special table, we will do something we call reversal of erroneous interest and penalty. We will do it's an administrative measure that we have put in place where we can remove the interest and penalties because we believe they were erroneous. If you, we had not put you on special table, you would not have accrued that. But for taxpayers put on special table because they were non-filers. You see, before we put you on special table, you were not even filing. So for such ones, we are not doing any reversal. For taxpayers put on special table because of eating non-compliance, we are going to do reversal on such. But uh, the only reversal we'll do is for late filing. You were prevented from filing on time and that is where we'll do reversal. But for late payment, we are not going to do reversal on that. So in case you were put on special table, you need first to comply with the conditions that have been given for you to be removed from special table. After that, if there are interest and penalties that were accrued from January, and this is the period that does not qualify for amnesty, there are some penalties that will go through reversal, the others the taxpayer will be required to pay. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that uh, explanation. And I could see the person who asked that question following the response on the chat box. And they were appreciating because the response was actually answering their question. Uh, just a follow up somebody still on the VAT special table, Judy is saying that um, the amnesty runs up to the timeline that you gave is up to December of uh, end of December 2022. So she's asking, what's about the penalties? from January 2023, especially if one was under special table. You've just responded to it, but maybe you can reiterate it for those that are finding themselves in the same predicament. Okay, I think uh, my earlier explanation was a bit clear on uh, taxpayers on special table. As I have explained, if from KRS side it noted, apologies, if it's Sorry. not that the penalties imposed were erroneous, just a minute. Yes. 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. Maybe you can get a cup of water. We cannot hear you. I can give you a moment to take a breath and then you respond. And uh, as we're giving you an opportunity, <laughs> let someone get you. Yes, um, I'll, I'll ask someone to organize a cup of water for you. Even as uh, our very able panelist is uh, just catching a breather, I just want to appreciate those of us that are following from KRA TV. We are both live on YouTube and KRA TV. I, I, I have uh, about, we are almost clocking 200, those of us that are streaming live, including one Mark Mogambi who has a question. Mark, we will pick your question very quickly, uh, but we have uh, Lamon Cyber, uh, somebody by that name who's following and they are very grateful. Miriam, they are saying thank you for the session. They are really learning a lot. Those of us that are streaming live on KRE TV, remember, uh, we have maxed out our capacity on uh, the Zoom link. So those of us that are trying to join kindly, the link uh, will be shared shortly on the chat box. Please share with your colleagues, ask them to like and subscribe and follow stream live. If they ask the questions from there, we'll be able to pick them and respond uh, to them. Uh, Miriam, you, we can continue. <laughs> Let me give you an opportunity to unmute just a moment. Uh, yes, I think you should be okay now. Yes. <laughs> All right. I think yes. you are, you are, okay. you are proceeding with the response. Mm. Okay. For taxpayers that have been put on special table, I've uh, explained the reason why the special table is bringing some heat is because there are some taxpayers who have been put on special table during the period that amnesty is not applicable. If you were put on special table before the amnesty came to be, or for the periods that qualify for amnesty, you have no reason to worry because all those injuries and penalties will be sorted by the amnesty provision. But from 1st January, where we don't have the amnesty and there is no waiver, if you were put on special table and we are just doing nil return, we will do reversal because nil does not, uh, there's no wrongdoing when you file nil return. It might be because you did not have anything, you did not trade that, that month. And by you being on special table, you are prevented from filing, meaning you accrued interest and penalties for periods that you are not able, no penalties for the month you are not able to file until you are removed from the special table. So for such taxpayers, we'll do something called reversal of erroneous interest and penalties. So you don't need to worry. You go to the TSO. They will guide you. There are some penalties that will go through reversal. The others will be required to pay. And I explained the ones right. that will be required to pay is non-filers. If you are a non-filer and we put you on a special table, you will not say you were prevented from filing because you were put on a special table. Because you were not filing even before you were put on a special table. Thank you very much. I want us to pick a question. Damka, accountants, we've seen your question and uh, I'll be asking Miriam shortly. Uh, but this one came earlier. Mugambi Mark, uh, following us live, is asking, what about the government of Kenya staff where the ministries don't remit pay? For example, county government. Yes, uh, kindly address uh, such scenarios, Miriam. Okay. Uh, for county government, I will just start by saying there is no amnesty and there is no waiver from 1st to January 2023. So for periods prior to that, they will get amnesty. From 1st January going forward, if a county pays late, they will have to take care of their interests and penalties. Uh, but uh, there was um, a concern by some county governments where they said the delay on uh, rem the, 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 their remittance is as a result of delayed disbursement of funds and they had requested for consideration. Given that the waiver from provision was removed by Treasury, and it is the same Treasury that uh, 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 maybe delayed the disbursement of the funds, I think uh, they can make a request there for consideration, either for Treasury to take up their debt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you have gotten a glass of water and something to drink. I just want to uh, take an opportunity to appreciate you and the questions that you're responding to. I've seen your questions. Um, I'll be asking uh, the questions. 
Uh, moving on, let's just give you an opportunity to sip some water. Now, uh, I've seen questions that have been responded to, the likes of uh, Nick who was asking, when will the automatic amnesty happen for those who have cleared the principal tax? I think you already had alluded to uh, that response. And then uh, there's a question here. I think this is a gentleman from Dubai. Um, does the authority review details for tax amnesty by investigation? I'm not sure, Miriam, whether that question makes sense to you. Does the authority review details for the tax amnesty by investigation? Does it make sense? Or can we ask for clarification? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> yes, now. Okay. Yeah, it's not clear. What uh, is okay. being asked is not clear about whether authority reviews details for tax amnesty by investigation. It's not clear, but if I may respond based on what I think they are asking, is whether taxpayers who are going through investigation qualify for amnesty. Yes, if a taxpayer has gone through investigation and assessment has been raised under investigation, as long as the penalty is not imposed under Section 85, the taxpayer will qualify for amnesty. So then I've seen questions that uh, you have responded to. Sterling Mushiri is saying, will KRA invest more resources to help taxpayers to reconcile ledgers? This is a big problem. Yes. Okay, yes, we have put structures. After the tax amnesty came to be, we have changed, we have done restructuring to ensure that we have enough resources to assist in reconciliation. The greatest, the bulk of our reconciliation issues are for public service division, and we have put enough uh, staff there to assist in reconciliation. But something we need to notice that says is reconciliation cannot happen until the documents are provided by the taxpayer. So it is starts with you as a taxpayer. If you have any reconciliation issues, kindly avail the documents so that we can conclude on the reconciliation process. Some of the documents needed are payment, evidence of payment. For example, if it's a public service division, there was a challenge with integration between KRA system and IPPD or GP. When you make payment, it goes to central bank, it does not appear in your ledger. For us to finalize on a reconciliation for such, the taxpayer has to provide evidence of payment for us to conclude on the reconciliation. But from KRA side, we have put enough resources to assist all taxpayers in their reconciliation. All right, let's let's move on with the questions. Do we also have, Hudson is saying, do we also have to apply for the waiver of interest and penalties where there are no principal taxes as at 31st December? I think you've responded to that. Let's move on. Uh, a question in 2017, some taxpayers were given penalties of 20,000 for filing uh, late returns. Is there a way that they can get amnesty for the penalty that they received in 2017? I think you've responded to that. For mm -hmm. their own uh, peace of mind, maybe you can just tell them yes. <laughs> okay. okay. I yes. think I'll just repeat. Maybe they joined late. I've said any, when we are looking at amnesty, we are looking for periods prior to 31st December 2022. Any period going backwards will qualify for amnesty. And maybe the reason you're asking about the 2017 in which imposed 20,000 and the normal rate that is 2,000, this used to make a lot of sense when we are doing waivers. A taxpayer would complain, why were, was I charged 20,000? yet the other years I was being charged 2,000. But given that we have amnesty, it's like uh, we have been given a fresh start, you will all qualify for those periods. Whether you filed your returns late or whether you didn't file, as long as you come forth and file the returns, we'll get amnesty. So I want to ask one question of uh, one of our listeners who's following us online. It's called Alfred Mathembe. Alfred is asking, uh, what about those whose tax obligations were added erroneously on registration. For example, they applied for their pins at cyber cafes. What happens to them? Okay. For you, the, the challenge with the erroneous obligation is nobody will ever know it is erroneous until the taxpayer comes forth and says this was an erroneous obligation that was added. We saw these for students 
when they were applying for higher education loan board for loans, they would go to a cyber and they would be given pay as one obligation. So for such, as long as the taxpayers come forward and say this, this obligation is erroneous, we will first do what we do, we call reversal of erroneous interest because the obligation, any penalty that arises from an erroneous obligation are also erroneous. So we do reversal, then we remove the obligation. Very much. I see a gentleman here who wants to ask you a question, and I want to actually give him an opportunity to ask it. His name is Joseph. Joseph, if you can hear us, I have given you an opportunity to actually go ahead and ask the question. Are you able to unmute, Joseph? Yes, please. Joseph, kindly tell us where you're calling us from and uh, go ahead with your question. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm calling from Dubai. Yes, Joseph. So I had applied for the uh, running a voluntary tax uh, disclosure program. So I had applied for a waiver on that program. Yes. And um, I've not uh, actually finished paying as per the agreement then. And uh, from, from the look of things, I might not have finished uh, clearing it by December. So that means that uh, I, I'll have to forfeit all the waiver that I had accrued. So in that case, will I be eligible to apply for the amnesty and uh, the current amnesty that uh, was introduced or am I blocked because I participated in the past uh, amnesty? Many thanks for that. Thank you very much, Joseph. Okay. You've called us all the way from Dubai. Miriam? Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, I don't know whether I should say fortunately or unfortunately. I think I should say fortunately. Uh, for this amnesty, it does not discriminate. For various past amnesties, they were very specific. There were conditions attached to them, but this one does not discriminate. If you had taken VDTP, that is voluntary tax disclosure, and you had not yet cleared, as long as you clear the debt by June next year, you'll qualify for the amnesty. So just make arrangements to clear the debt before that year of June, then you'll qualify for the amnesty. Since the only exclusion that has been put for the current amnesty is just penalties under section 85 and any penalties accrued from 1st January 2023. So others will qualify for amnesty. Joseph, uh, maybe you can uh, confirm that your question has been uh responded to i just want to joseph where are you i think your microphone is still on mute is it i just wanted to know that yes yes satisfied with the response absolutely i'm uh, so satisfied i appreciate her clarity Fantastic. Thank you so much. I'll allow us to now just pick a few more questions from more taxpayers. Um, there's a gentleman here who raised his hands uh, quite early, and I want to um, ask him to ask his question before I go back to our chat box. Uh, Miriam, there's a thought that has come to mind following Joseph's question before we get a question from our taxpayer, because he has mentioned the voluntary tax disclosure program. Uh, one is, what about taxpayers who have an ongoing payment plan? What happens to them? Okay. Okay. Uh, for taxpayers who have ongoing payment plan, it depends on, uh, was it a manual payment plan or online? For the online payment plan, the, the our system, the way it has been uh, structured, it does not allow you to apply for amnesty if you have a running payment plan online. Because once you apply for an online payment plan, it calculates the future, future projected installments and interest and lands it in the amount payable and distributes it. Meaning when you apply for the payment plan online, it will not give you the benefit of the amnesty. So for those who had applied for uh, online payment plan, that is through the old module of payment plan, not through the amnesty window, I request you to go and cancel those payment plans and do it through the amnesty window so that you can benefit from the amnesty. For those who had running manual payment plans, 
you just need to make it uh, legal through the amnesty platform. Because if you you have a running payment plan that is off the system, nobody will, uh, it is not visible. You have not met the conditions of amnesty that is application online and also the payment plan. So kindly go visit, you don't even need to visit your TSO. Just go to your iPage, apply for that payment plan again online. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. John here has a follow-up question regarding the payment plan. And the question is this, if you default on a payment plan midway, it is enforced and later within the financial year, the amount is cleared. Will that taxpayer still qualify for the tax amnesty? That is John Minor with the question. Oh, yes, the taxpayer. Yes, the taxpayer will qualify for the amnesty as long as the debt is paid before 30th of June 2024. And the reason we are enforcing is because you entered into a contract to pay. Normally, in the debt collection process, it is, uh, for example, if we close your account, you give a, a contract on how you will pay. If you default on it, we are not sure that you will honor the plan as agreed. So that is why we enforce. So yes, even if we enforce and then you pay, as long as you pay before 30th of June, you'll qualify for the amnesty. The only downside of enforcement is when we enforce, we are likely to recover the entire amount earlier than you would have intended to clear. Because during enforcement, we recover every amount we are able to come across. So it is better you honor your plan so that you have a, a flexible way of dealing with your debt. So we encourage avoid default. Okay, all right. Now we have the likes of David Kimani who wants to ask a question and I'm actually giving him an opportunity to ask the question. I've seen his hands raised for some time. David Kimani, you can hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. David, uh, kindly raise your voice a bit and tell us where you're calling us from. Yeah, my name is, uh, my name is David. I'm calling you from uh, Nairobi. Yes, David, I... please proceed with your question. Yeah, thank you, Miriam, for the good insights. Uh, I'm loving the presentation. It is very encouraging and helpful. My question is, uh, I had applied for the waiver which was being given a few months ago, where we are being given 60% waiver. Then we make the payment of 40%, which I did for two companies, but that was never implemented in my ledger. Those amounts were not removed in my ledger. My question would be, uh, since you're saying that the waiver is going to be removed and uh, the, the timelines are going to be removed, what happens? Do, we to, do I have to pay that or can I still apply the amnesty? David, okay. I think we lost okay. you at some point, but yes, please proceed. Yeah, I got him clearly. Uh, for the 60-40, where taxpayers were required to pay 60% of the penalties and interest, and they would get 40% waiver. And the reason the offer was so good was because before, taxpayer was not assured of any percentage. So with a big debt and you're being given 60%, you pay 60, you get 40%, it was a very good deal. But unfortunately, it is offering more than that. Yes, so for taxpayers who had applied for 60-40, for periods from January to June, because for periods prior to that, we will just encourage, we will tell you to wait because it will all be implemented in the system upon um, as we implement the amnesty. For any period prior to 31st December going backwards, you don't need to worry, we will remove the remaining, uh, the 40 that we promised to remove. But for period from January to June, where the fair is taken up the 60-40, we will process those waivers. Because that period does not qualify for amnesty, does not qualify for waiver. But since you had already been given an offer and you had taken it up, you will benefit from the 60-40. We will remove for you the 40. We will process because the application had already come. For those who have not taken up the 60, 40, they will have to pay the entire interest and penalty. Uh, that, is, that is clear, Miriam. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, the questions are streaming in. Miriam, I don't know whether we will exhaust them. Can but we do they are this? Very... Yes. Yeah, can we do this? I just take the question as I respond as we proceed. So that we see whether we can capture as many as possible. 
and uh, then you can unmute for the ones who wish to speak. <coughs> that is oh, okay. That's... that's okay. Let's do that. Uh, let's let let me okay. ask one I'll question from. Uh, okay. Let me ask one question from. Uh, you know, there are those that are following us online, uh, that are streaming via KRA TV and also via our YouTube channel, still under KRA TV. Mm -hmm. So there are questions that are coming mm -hmm. through there that may not be captured on Zoom. And I just want to ask those two, and then you can go ahead and respond to the Zoom questions. Under KRA TV, we okay. have one lady called Sarah Nganga. In fact, I have two questions. Let's start with Sarah. Sarah Nganga is saying, hello, I applied for the KRA tax amnesty yesterday. Uh, then after five minutes, I was sent an email by KRA asking for my audited income statements, bank statements for compliance check. Uh, maybe you can confirm. I think Sarah is indicating that she was actually able to make an application for the tax amnesty. Uh, that, is, <laughs> that is one question. And then lastly, we have one uh, from uh, the banter. I think after you respond to this, now I'll give you the leeway to just continue responding to questions on the chat. Uh, the, uh, this is, they're called the banter. The banter is saying, I filed an individual return in 2016 wrongly, and it shows a principal tax and interests uh, that have accrued. So when they are trying to amend their return, that is, remember they filed in the year 2016, the system mm -hmm. says that it's now more than five years. Okay, mm -hmm. so then they are asking, how then should I go about it? Yeah. Okay, I will start with the first one. It is just, I believe it's a coincidence that uh, you were fit uh, uh, for compliance check the same same time you applied for amnesty. They are not linked. Amnesty will proceed as normal for periods that you have applied for amnesty. We will not, uh, that will, the, the fact that you are, will be done a compliance check will not prevent the amnesty from taking effect. So for periods that don't have principal taxes, you will get. For periods that have principal taxes, you will have to clear the principal taxes, then you'll get amnesty. But for the compliance check, I would request if I had, during my presentation I mentioned the need to to support checks, audit che compliance checks and audits. Because if you cooperate with the audit team, and they conclude this assessment within this year, and then you take up the amnesty and say before 30th of June 2024, you will also benefit from amnesty. Assuming they raise an assessment and you pay before 30th of June, you'll take advantage of the amnesty. And uh, the other one was on, um, uh, just remind me, the, the, the second one was on? The banter. The banter um, was asking a question about uh, being filing a wrong return in the year 2016 okay, okay, okay. and uh, yes. being unable to file an amended return yes. because the system says amended. that it's been five years. Yes. yes. The law gives a time limit within which you can do a return amendment. A return amendment can only be done within five years. After that, you get time barred. So as long as you did not do a return amendment within the timeline, you have been locked out. Just like for VAT refund claims, if you don't claim your your refunds within six months, your inputs within six months, you cannot. You are locked. So you are time barred. You are supposed to do return amendment within five years. So you're past that. But in case you feel you have ground enough to support your return amendment, you can do a request through policy to see whether they can agree or accept you later request for return amendment but as per law you can only do it within five years thank you so much now the ball is on your coat uh, you can proceed and ask the questions the ones that i had asked before were up to okay. only as at 11 30 imagine so all through until okay. that, that, that's an hour of questions you can actually respond to them okay i can i've seen some that start at uh, 11 16. let me just start there I'll go as fast as I can so that I respond to as many of you as possible. <laughs> I'll start with 1116. I don't have principles. I only have interest and penalties. Do I benefit? Yes. I've mentioned, yes. If you only have penalties and interest, you also benefit. Will the waiver apply for late filing penalties? It's not a waiver, it's amnesty. Yes, if there's late filing penalties, they will qualify for amnesty as long as they are not for periods after the 1st January 2023. How can one get a TCC 
is their penalties for periods up to December 2022. Uh, once we effect the automatic amnesty for periods that don't have principal taxes, you will not need to worry because once you apply for the TCC, it will be automatic. But for those who want to apply for TCC now before we implement the automatic one, there is something we call TCC relaxation. When you go to your TSO, they'll facilitate you, they'll open for you the system, and you'll be able to get your TCC. Uh, and I'm, another one where penalties and interest is waived, do you formally notify taxpayers via ITAX register? Yes. Upon, I've mentioned the triggers to amnesty, number one being application for amnesty, another one being payment, and then the third one being automatic. Upon crediting of your ledger, upon effecting of amnesty, you'll get an email immediately notifying you about the amnesty. Where there exists a payment plan for tax arrears, can we still apply for waiver on penalties and interest and only pay the principal? Kindly note, I've mentioned there is no waivers going forward. What we have is amnesty. Yes, as long as you stick to the payment plan and clear the debt by 30th of June 2024, you will qualify for amnesty only for periods that will not have any principal taxes. Good morning, all. I registered my organization in 2019, but the type of business I intended to do was told I can't import the seeds. It's illegal. So I have never transacted any business in the organization. How can I get the tax waiver? There are two ways you can get it. It's not a tax waiver, as I've mentioned. We are calling it amnesty. So there are two ways. You can request for removal of the obligation, assuming you had requested for VAT. You can request for removal of that, and then we can do reversal. And we also, instead of reversal, since the period is under amnesty, you'll get amnesty. The other way you can go about it is in case you want to retain the company, you can file all the returns that uh, you didn't file. You can file new returns given you never transacted. Once you file the new returns, you'll get amnesty for the penalties that will be imposed. Uh, what will happen for those who already have payment plans with KRA? How do we apply for the amnesty? As I explained, just go to your iPage and at Debt and Enforcement, you will see a tab which says amnesty. Once you click on that tab, just ignore the previous payment plans that you had, as long as it's for old debt. For new debt, kindly follow up with the payment plan. For old debt, just go to that Debt and Enforcement apply for amnesty online because the law talks about two conditions, applying for the amnesty and two, pay, giving a plan that you will clear before that year of June. So kindly apply for the amnesty online. Through debt and enforcement, you'll see a tab written amnesty. When you click there, it will show all the debt which you can click and give the number of installments. Please note, it will not need any approval. If I have principal tax and I pay this in full by December 2023 before making application, do I still need to make an application? Uh, this is uh, an issue that is bringing a lot of issues. The law is very clear. It says the taxpayer must make an application. So for if you intend to pay by December 2023, from our side, we will not have received your application, meaning we can enforce on you because we have not even received any application. So I would encourage, since the law had provided for application, kindly apply. It does not cost you anything. Is Miriam, oh yes. Is Miriam, oh yes. Is Miriam, oh yes. On taxpayers by going back, yes. Yeah, is Kerry <coughs> just creating a necessary bottleneck on taxpayers by going back to legacy and sending letters over periods as far as 2001? The unfortunate, key, an unfortunate thing about taxation is taxes never go away. If a tax was imposed and it was never paid, it will never go away. It has to be paid. And examples of this is uh, there is something called caveat. If a taxpayer has property and uh, they they did not pay debt, we can do what we call caveat. We can go to Ministry of Land and caveat that property so that you cannot transfer. Sometimes we get caveats that were placed as early as 1989. Somebody wants to transfer land, they can't because it says commissioner of income tax and interest on a debt of 1 million. Unless the taxpayer pays that amount, we cannot remove the caveat. So kindly not, taxes don't go away and they have to be paid. That is why we have gone back to legacy and requested you to make arrangements to pay such debt. Mark, 
Now, for those who didn't have principal tax, while you have removed penalties and interest, will you communicate? Yes. Every transaction will enter, any contra will put in the ledger to effect amnesty, you'll get communication through email. Please clarify. And also, we are planning of sending uh, amnesty certificates uh, during before the end of the amnesty period. So on top of getting acknowledgement of the removal of the interest and penalties, you'll also get an amnesty certificate. Please clarify on the taxpayer currently being audited by KRA for periods prior to December 2022. I had made the clarification as long as the audit is concluded and then you make plans to clear the debt before that year of June 2024 and you clear, you will get the amnesty. Uh, land sold in 2018 and no CGT was declared. If the principal is paid now, will one qualify? Yes, you will qualify because the tax was due for periods prior to 31st December 2022. Yes, if you pay now, you will qualify for amnesty. What about the January 2019 VAA inconsistency? Yes, I know there was a system each that imposed um, the VAA in January 2019. Taxpayers were also not told not to object because it was to be sorted internally. Yes, we are following up on this. There is a team for ICT that is working toward reverse, reversing the assessments that were raised during this period. So you don't need to worry. Very soon the assessments will be vacated and you will not have any penalties to worry about. Is it a must to apply for amnesty if there is no principal? I've mentioned you don't apply for amnesty where there is no principal. You only apply for amnesty where there is principal tax. Uh, will the penalties be waived automatically? Yes, I've mentioned that previously. What will happen if, happen to penalties and interest applied after KRA audit and the additional assessments are issued after the amnesty? The taxpayer will be required to pay the entire interest and penalty because amnesty runs from 1st September to 30th of June 2024. Uh, somebody is sharing kindly. I believe uh, somebody is sharing a screen kindly. Moment. Yes, I am. I am. I am. I am working on that. Just give me a moment. Uh, yes, I have. Uh, sorry about that. Yes. Okay. So about if an audit is concluded after 30th of June 2024, you'll be required to pay the entire debt, that is principal, interest, and penalties. If there is a way you can fast track provision of documents so that the audit can be concluded on time. It is to your advantage because you'll benefit from the amnesty. Uh, hello, for one of our clients, VAT penalties and interest were automatically removed, but that was not done for income tax, no principal tax due. Please let me know why that is. Uh, one of our clients, VAT penalties and interest were automatically removed. Maybe the taxpayer applied for amnesty for only VAT. So when they applied, I said upon application, it will automatically remove the penalties. But uh, it is, it, all the interest and penalties should disappear as long as they are for period prior to 31st December 2024, 2023, 2022. But in case they don't disappear, we are running, I've mentioned three ways. Number one, upon application. Number two, upon payment. The number three is automatic. So in case there are any interest and penalties that remain, the automatic amnesty, we remove them. Are we able to access the recording? I believe you will be able to get that feedback. Please clarify if late filing penalties qualify for amnesty. Yes, they do, as long as they are not for periods after 1st January 2023. What should we expect the cleanup to be rolled out? It has already started for taxpayers with principal. As long as you're doing application, you'll get automatic and upon payment for the ones who did not have principal before the end of the month you will have been uh do people with debt on si duty yes as long as it's not penalties under section 85 what will happen to taxpayers who had already finished paying principal taxes by june 2023 as long as the debt you had declared are for periods prior to 31st december 2023 you'll get the automatic amnesty you will not need to apply but if the, these are for debt from 1st January 2023, you'll have to pay the interest and penalties because there is no waiver 
and there is no amnesty for that period. Does this apply to individuals who have penalties? Are we going to get this recording? The penalties and interest for MRI are still on the ledger. Uh, as long as uh, there is no principal, don't worry, the interest and penalties will be removed. Suppose you were registered for landlord rent, how do you reverse if you are not a landlord? You just need to write a letter explaining that the MRI obligation was erroneously added. It will be removed, and I believe going forward you will be able to only file for what you are rightfully supposed to register for. What happens to the pin in the special table? I'd clarified on that. There are some penalties and interest that will be reversed. There are others that are pay will be required to pay. Do those with interest and penalties for periods before 31st December, but principal taxes cleared by June, have to apply? They don't need to apply. In the pay because when you go to amnesty application tab, you'll notice if you don't have principal taxes, it does not populate, it does not allow you to apply. So you don't need to apply. In the payment tab, I can see fines and penalties, but on debt, and enforcement, I can only apply what might be the issue. In the application window, you'll only see the principal. You will not see penalties. I, I showed some examples here for periods that will apply for amnesty. You'll only apply for amnesty online if your principal taxes. For periods without principal, you will get automatic amnesty. So that is why you're not able to see. On the payment tab, you're able to see fines, but on the application, you cannot see it because those fines will automatically be removed. Uh, the deletion of section 89, yes, that was the waiver provi provision. When will the amnesty clear automatically have responded to that? We paid for principal on time, but was not captured in ITAS. We are followed with PRA by submitting relevant documents to Samia office from this, but reconciliation has never been made. For payments that were made on time, you don't need to worry much because upon capturing of the payment, there will not be penalties to be removed. Because when we capture payments, for payments that were not been captured, we capture using the date of payment. As long as the date of payment was before due date, you will not accrue penalties and interest. But uh, kindly not, just go talk to the debt manager to assist you fast track there the capturing of the payment. Because as a taxpayer, you need to be comfortable noting your ledger is correct. I cannot apply what might be the reason. Uh, I'm trying to look at what you've just shown. You cannot apply because you don't have principal taxes. From what you have just posted, the reason you cannot apply is because you don't have principal taxes. I've mentioned amnesty application is for periods that have principal taxes. But from what is shown on the screen, you don't have principal taxes. So kindly relax, it will be removed automatically. The account manager are either slow or overwhelmed since we have followed our form, but nothing happened and our issue hasn't been sorted. It's not upon us to first. Now what I will recommend for taxpayers that you feel your issues are not uh, responded on time, we have a complaint route you can use, and that is CIC at kra.go.ke. Any complaints that come to KRA must be resolved within an SLA of 30 days. So for cases where you feel you might miss out on the amnesty because of delay in reconciliation or fast tracking, fast tracking the capturing of some of the payment, you can report them through CIC and you'll be assisted. Within 30 days, everything will be sorted. But apologies for that, it should not happen. When you apply for amnesty, does that mean a taxpayer will now be eligible to apply for VAT refund as opposed to where the system is? How the VAT system works is when you apply for a refund, if you have a debt, it will block you. It will tell you to go and sort the debt. Upon in, uh, effecting the amnesty in the system, it means those periods that were being blocked because they had penalties and interest will have already been reconciled. So when a taxpayer goes to apply for a refund, they will be able, the refund request will be able to go through, except if the taxpayer has unpaid principal taxes. So yes, you'll be able to apply for refund. But even now, even if you're blocked, you go to the debt office, they will be able to say something called a debt status. 
they will be able to facilitate you, give a death status despite the fact that you have penalties and your refund will be processed. Will a non file um, benefit if they yes? Miriam, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, you, yes. you, you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you. I appreciate our taxpayers are getting uh, feedback to their questions. Now, yes. um, mm -hmm. ordinarily, now we then mm -hmm. we would be winding up uh, because we've spent close to two hours uh, in terms of responding to the questions. Uh, but considering mm. that we are in the customer service week and uh, yes. we are giving a priority to our taxpayers to have their questions answered so that they know that they are felt and we are hearing them. Uh, I'd want, I don't know if this works, but uh, we can discuss it here, Miriam. Uh, would it be fair enough for us to give them at least the next 10 minutes uh, to respond to their questions? Uh, I know you've responded to quite a number. Um, do you feel like 10 minutes would be sufficient to try and uh, rope in as many answers, especially for the repeat questions? We yes, can try to yes. do something within that, that 10 minutes. Yes, I'll try my best. Any question that is repeated, I'll skip. I'll just say skip because I would have responded. I'll just pick the ones that we have not responded to and see whether I can respond to the remaining questions. I think that Thank is you. agreeable. Thank you very much. It's a, a special week okay. for our taxpayers. That's why we are stretching a bit. And I just want to ask us to check the link that has been shared on the chat box. Please encourage those that are not able to join the Zoom link to follow online on KRE TV and on our YouTube page. Please proceed. OK. Will an unfiler benefit keep? I'd responded. Uh, where is KRE going to update such? It will be on your ledger. We paid principal taxes. We pay principal VAT and the payment is in legacy account. And this has never been reconciled since 2016. That there are penalties and interest. Kindly follow up with the debt office. We have put structures that will facilitate completion of CD, uh, legacy debt. We have a team called CDO and they're the one facilitating clearing of legacy debt. If I'm here to file my 2022 year return, can I file now and I request for waiver? Yes, not waiver, but amnesty will qualify. Uh, I forgot to file new return, annual returns for dormant company for 2020. Does that qualify? Yes. How about return past the five years rule? Can they be filed? Uh, yes, you can file any returns. Then going back, you can file returns. How do we deal with penalties and fines in this amnesty window when the parameters are not provided? You don't apply for amnesty for penalty periods without principal, they will be automatically removed. You only apply for amnesty for periods with principal so that we can give a plan. We pay the principal for income tax in 2022 and the system is showing a penalty and interest. Does that qualify? Yes. Greeting, what about those cases with valid penalty, e.g., wrong MRI and payee obligation? It will be removed, the erroneous obligation, and will do reversal or will do amnesty is for periods such as December prior. Uh, no, January 2023, no provision for waiver is extremely harsh and not business friendly. This should be reconsidered. I think uh, from business side and from KRA side, we had what we call PRWPs, that is payment returns without check. And it was becoming uh, uh, very difficult for government to collect taxes when somebody files a return and they don't pay. And it was felt that uh, uh, since when you get a loan, you pay interest. Why should you not pay? if you stay with KRA money. So it was a decision not made by KRA, but Treasury. And uh, that is how it is this time going forward. There will be no waivers. Does the amnesty apply to taxpayers who have penalties charged to late filing? Yes. Section 85, tax avoidance? Yes. It's not qualifying. Does the amnesty override the VDTP? Yes. Miriam, what about the 60 waiver recently given but not effected? As long as it's for periods from January coming forward, it will be affected the waiver. If it's for periods qualifying for amnesty, will affect the amnesty for such. What about penalties raised under Section 87 of TPA 2015, which usually is failure to appear before commissioner? The only exclusion from amnesty is Section 85. 87 qualifies. Joyce, good question. Does penalties for late filing non principal qualify? Yes. Does the tax amnesty for penalties and interest apply if the principal tax was paid before due date? Does tax amnesty for penalties and interest apply if the principal tax was paid before due date? 
if the principal was paid before due date, there will be no penalty. There will be no penalty. But as long as there was principal and you pay before that year of June, they qualify. So you mean you have to apply amnesty for every period separately? No. You will apply for all periods together as long as they have principal taxes. How do you apply for amnesty on ITAX? I've explained. How soon can taxpayers apply for amnesty and where on ITAX should they apply? I've explained about the debt and enforcement tab, the amnesty. You apply there. Has the automatic waiver been effected? No. It will be effected within the month, but there are some cases that have already been effected. When you apply for amnesty, does this mean a taxpayer will now be eligible to apply for VAT refunds? Yes. Mm, thank you. Uh, clarification, when you don't have any principal amount, but have penalties and interest carry with automatically, yes, we will remove the penalties. She has explained it well. Okay. Going down, I'm almost done. How soon can you get a TCC after applying for amnesty? When you apply for amnesty, as long as you have paid the first installment, because you'll apply for amnesty if you have principal taxes. Upon payment of the first installment, you should get a TCC. But at, assuming the only debt you have is interest and penalties, you, you should get it immediately. Once we do the automatic um, uh, removal of interest and penalties, you'll get it automatically. But before we implement that, you just go to your TSO, they'll facilitate you. Within the day, you should get your TCC. Uh, yes, I can't access my ledger because of being added to the special table. How do I do it? Kindly comply with the provisions that you are given. When you go to KRA website, there are guidelines on removal from special table. Comply with the conditions that have been provided. Then you'll be removed from special table, then apply for the amnesty. And thank you for the presentation. Please clarify if penalties for late filing qualify. Yes. What about penalties raised under Section 87? I've responded to that. Could you take us through on what to do where tax returns were not done? You just file. If there are returns that you didn't file, kindly file. That is why we are saying even non-filers, if you are non-filer and you file all tax returns, you will qualify for amnesty up to 31st December 2022. Uh, the section was incredible. Thank you. When are you running the system for those who don't have principal have responded? Uh, we need more of these sessions. I have a question in regard to income tax. For a case, auditors audited our books before 30th of June and amount payable was paid but was not uh, was um, not was filed after 30th of June. Up to now, penalties and interest still appearing on the ledger. Kindly advise they should be removed from the automatic amnesty. Great work. Okay. Uh, does uh, Somebody is asking, so, so I only benefit from amnesty if I had principal. No, I've already responded to that. You don't have paid. You, there is the first category that will apply. The second one will not be required to apply. But all of them will benefit from amnesty. The ones who will be required to apply are the ones with principal. The ones without principal will not need to apply. will give them automatic amnesty. Does amnesty cover payment plans agreement need but not owners before December 2022? As long as you clear the date before 30th of June 2023, you'll, 2024, you'll get the amnesty. Good afternoon. That was a good presentation. The Finance Act to waive penalties up to December, and the Act was passed on this. On what, what, what happens to taxpayers who had penalties from January to June 2023? Who would have ordinarily? Uh, the, 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 the waiver provision was there. If the taxpayer did not take up the waiver provision before the deletion of the session for waiver, they will have to pay the principal. For taxpayers who had already applied for waiver for periods from 1st of January to 30th of June, they will be processed. But those who had not applied, they did not take up the offer when the waiver provision was available. In case you apply for tax amnesty and give out a payment plan, say four months period, then by good luck I realize I can make yes, you can clear the debt even before the end of the four installment. You can even do a one-off payment and you'll qualify for amnesty. And I've said upon payment you'll notice that the interest and penalties are being knocked off. For PIN that have penalties without principal taxes, when are they penalties going to be waived? I've responded to that. For taxpayers without principal taxes, but with only penalties and interest out soon, will I have responded to that? Brenda, you are also doing a good job. Congratulations. I agree with you, Brenda, doing good. Taking advice for those who have not been filing returns, file your returns and you'll benefit from amnesty. You mentioned that legacy debt will qualify for amnesty. How does one apply online? For the legacy debt will not apply online. We are providing a way out on how to deal with that. But for the time being, what we are advising taxpayers to do is make arrangements to pay 
once you pay, we have a mechanism on how we will remove it because you are not even able to see the legacy system. There is something we are doing in the back office to remove that. What is the time frame of removal of interest of respondents? So you only apply if you have outstanding principal years. The others you don't need to apply, it will be automatic. I've learned a lot, welcome, by when is KRA targeting to clear of respondents? What about taxpayers with principal taxes for period dating back to this? They will qualify as long as they clear the date before that year of June 2024. What about taxpayers with principal taxes for period dating have responded? What of the employees with missing pay credit from employer and have accrued penalties and interest? When the employer posts the credit, or the mostly is pay as one, once the employer's credits are updated, the employee's ledger will automatically be updated, meaning there will be no penalties that will, the penalties will disappear because the updating of the ledger will be at, is at the date when the payments were made. So, but we are fast tracking reconciliation of the employer's ledger to ensure taxpayers don't miss out in case the taxpayer filed late. When you apply for amnesty, does this mean a taxpayer will now be eligible to apply for Yes. I think, uh, should I continue, Brenda? Yes, and, and uh, well, I am tempted to say yes, but we are time bad. Uh, the 10 minutes are up. Mm -hmm. I think you have tried your level best. We have tried our best to respond to as many questions as possible. I don't think we'll be able to exhaust them right? because the more you answer, the more they come in. But I think as mm -hmm. at uh, this point, uh, majority of the questions have been well answered. Um, to our taxpayers, I think we have given you uh, an opportunity to ask as many questions as possible. Worry not, if your question was not answered, remember that we are available on all uh, platforms, including social media and also our KRA uh, official email, which is call center. We are going to post them there for you so that you can still channel your questions. On Twitter or is it X, you can find us at uh, KRA Care. And also we are available on Facebook, that is under Kenya Revenue Authority. All these handles, we are going to uh, post them for you so that you can get to answer your questions and get uh, clarity. And remember, this is not the last session. We will have many more sessions talking on the tax amnesty. All you need to do is uh, keep tabs with us on our social uh, media pages where we'll be able to inform you when we will have yet another session like this, just responding to your questions on uh, the KRA tax amnesty. Wow, Miriam, you have done a tremendous uh, job today responding to as many questions as possible. I'd like to know, um, at this point, uh, whether you have any closing remarks uh, at this point to our taxpayers. You are the champion of the amnesty. You're spearheading uh, this program and running with it. What can you tell them uh, that will benefit them in this customer service week, even as you give us your closing remarks? Okay, thank you very much, Brenda. Uh, what I would encourage every taxpayer to do is to take up the amnesty. The amnesty comes to give you relief from your interest and penalties, and it, it runs up to the end of June 2024. So it is an opportunity that has been given to you to have a fresh start where you'll not need to struggle with the penalties that had accrued. So kindly come forth, file the returns that you did not file, so that you can enjoy the amnesty. And if your principal success kindly come forth and pay, give plans on how to clear the debt, give payment plan, and honor, ensure you honor the plan before 30th of June 2024, so that you can benefit from the amnesty. And also for taxpayers who maybe want to apply for refunds, want to apply for KCCs, kindly be patient with us within the month, when we do the automatic one, when you apply for your TCC, it will be automatic. When you apply for your refund, it will go through because we'll have cleared the interest and penalties. But no officer should deny you a TCC uh, and no refund claim should be rejected because of a penalty that qualifies for amnesty. So we have already guided the staff accordingly that they should not deny you a TCC. You should not, uh, your refund should not be rejected because of a penalty falling under amnesty period. Also, this is uh, to inform you that uh, we have mechanisms that are open for complaints. So in case you have any complaint about anything, 
there are some complaints that we are getting that taxpayers, uh, our officers are demanding for debt, uh, including interest and penalties, or we are closing accounts for only debt that are interest and penalties. Kindly note, these will qualify for automatic amnesty and nobody should harass you to pay the penalties and interest that qualify under the amnesty period. So we really appreciate your support so far. So many taxpayers have taken up the amnesty and we request you not to be left out. Kindly take up the offer and benefit from this amnesty and be our voice out there. Talk to many. When you see something good happening, kindly be the first person to share with your colleagues, to share with your friends about this offer. It is something that has never happened before and uh, we should take advantage of it and uh, benefit from this amnesty. Asantini, Sana for your time, for your many questions, and for the ones that we did not respond to, I believe we'll be able to capture these questions and uh, we'll know a way of how the same will be availed to you. Thank you very much, Brenda. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think it's been such an informative session. I just want to give you feedback that we've received here from the likes of uh, MCI. Uh, Abi Bagat, I remember you're in India. He says, great session. Uh, MCIE is even asking for your WhatsApp number. I do not think we can give you Miriam's WhatsApp number. However, uh, she's readily available to respond to uh, your question. Margaret is saying this was a very informative session. It is much appreciated. Blessings to you all. Uh, I see Albert saying, well done, ladies. Thank you very much. Miriam, uh, Maureen is saying, thank you, Miriam. It was very educative. And they are really responding to you. Uh, CPA Ratemo Samuel is saying, great presentation, very great indeed. I think a lot of people are really feeling assisted and you can see Corey Henry is saying it is an exemplary webinar indeed. And he's saying it is quite informative. And I know if you scroll through the chat, uh, chat box, uh, you get to see how appreciative they are. David Kimani is saying, thank you, Kiare, for the good training. Oh, he's saying it's also well moderated. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, David. Don't go just yet. We are not done. We have more good information. We have a lot of uh, information for you. So don't go. We're just wrapping this up uh, for the amnesty session. Henry Chopeta is saying very educative. Majority of them actually are saying very informative or very educative, meaning that they have uh, garnered a lot from your session. Margaret is even asking, when will you come again? Margaret, we will... Uh, organized, stay tuned. Uh, on Kiare TV, we actually have a wonderful session that's coming up again with uh, Miriam very, very soon. So we are going to get you uh, information on our social media handles. I think uh, that's it from us, Miriam. Thank you so much for the session that we have had with you. Um, I, I will put you on uh, mute for some time because we want to listen to uh, how taxpayers can also take advantage of our uh, corruption reporting platforms that we have in place in Kiari. And then now we will get back to wrap it up and just uh, tell our listeners, Kwaheri, I know time is very well spent, but we said because it is the customer service week, we are going to stretch a bit and not go for lunch. We're going to sit and listen to them uh, for the next few minutes. So I'll I kindly allow, ask you to uh, turn off your camera for some time because I want to introduce uh, Nicholas Kimutai, who will not spend a lot of time talking to us. Uh. He will only mention a comment or two. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the wonderful feedback. Felix Munua is saying, we are sharing the news. Miriam, Felix is uh, on KRA TV platform. He's saying, YouTube platform, he's saying that he's sharing the news. And uh, Nature Cool still on the chat box and the Kerry TV is saying salute to you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, one question that came in that I was not so sure how to respond to. I think before I let you go, it would be fair enough for you to comment on this. And Atlas Fiscal Solutions wanted to know, does someone with customs and excise debt qualify for the tax amnesty? I think that's a very relevant question. We cannot leave it unanswered. Yeah. Does someone with customs and excise okay. debt qualify for the amnesty even as Mr. Nicholas Kimuta is getting ready? Okay, uh, let me respond to that. Uh, the tax amnesty is provided for under the Tax Procedures Act and the Tax Procedures Act covers the Revenue Act of which ECMA that is the provision, the act that covers custom duty, 
case, and ECMA is not covered under TPA, the Tax Procedures Act. So no, custom duty and any penalties imposed under the custom regime are not covered under this amnesty, since amnesty is only covering revenue laws, of which ECMA is not part of it. And uh, also, I have seen somebody who has really complained gache. Uh, maybe I can take only that one. Only that one. Gache it's allowed. has it's been allowed. mentioning that, yeah, Gache is saying that they wanted to make a payment and they want to know whether they can make the payment now so that they benefit from there. Can I pay principal as early as today as with the penalty and interest as per the tax amnesty? Yes. If you make the payment today, I've said the triggers for amnesty, number one is application, the other one is payment, and then the one which we are yet to implement is automatic. So upon payment, it will trigger removal of the interest and penalties. And for some who might have paid and it has not been triggered, kindly be patient with us. Maybe there is some delay, but it will, you will just notice it. You'll get emails notifying you about the amnesty. So thank you very much once again, and uh, thank you, Brenda. Thank you so much. I think we just have a lot of positive feedback streaming in. Uh, the likes of the banter whose questions you responded to saying thank you for the webinar, well presented and be blessed. And so many positive feedback. Uh, Adonis Mirega saying, great, Miriam, thank you very much, including CPA Maingi Peter. He says that today was a very informative session. Uh, they say, thank you, Miriam. It was really amazing with the amnesty tax education. Lucy Mwangi saying thank you for the forum. Uh, and I, I, I know you can read their feedback from where you are. I want to quickly just uh, bring in Mr. Nicholas uh, Kimutai. Now, uh, this session would not be complete without us giving you an avenue where you can uh, do uh, corruption reporting from. I'd want Mr. Nicholas, you can hear us. Uh, thank you, we can actually see your screen. I'm sorry for muting you by mistake. I have actually unmuted you again. Uh, yes, are you able to say something? Now, it, is, it will not be a fully fledged presentation. What we will do, we will just give him an opportunity to mention a very pertinent or very important uh, parameters that have been put in place by KRA uh, for you, including what is called I whistle. Yes, uh, so that you can be aware, even as we bring today's session to a close. Okay, Mr. Kimutai? Yes, thank you, Brenda. I can get you very clearly. Yes, please proceed. Yes. Oh, are you able is... to... Yes, can, are we able to see you? No, I'm having a challenge with my camera. I... Okay, okay, no problem, but please proceed. Yes, I yes. think, uh, yes. So we are making it as brief as possible, just straight to the session in terms of what they need to know in as far as uh, ethics, integrity, and national values are concerned. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Miriam, for the great presentation. Mine will be very brief. I will only talk about some ethical issues and malpractices that can occur in our processes. Now, our vision, as an authority can be achieved under ethical environment. Hence, without ethics, all these efforts can be derailed if we do not observe ethics and integrity. And one of our unethical behavior is corruption. And corruption really affects us as a country, taxpayers, even the staff. And this contributes directly to poor quality of goods and services, discourages domestic and foreign investment, and all of us should join hands in fight against corruption. Now, Miriam has talked about amnesty, and uh, I'm happy that uh, many of us have shown interest in applying tax amnesty. Now, in the process, maybe some unethical practice can occur during application. And as an, as an authority, we have put in, we have put in several measures to address that one. So as you can see from my screen, KRA, just a little bit to over to. So we have some measures that we have put in place as an authority to address corruption. First, we have a department called Intelligence Strategic Operation Investigation and Enforcement, 
which does oversight on integrity programs. These departments conduct lifestyle audit and vetting of our staff to make sure that the income they are getting goes hand in hand with the way, in the way they are living. We have also automated our processes, as you can see from the screen. We have ITAX, we have ICMX, we have electronic cargo tracking system, whereby we track entry of goods into the country. And then we have one stop border post, whereby also we also track goods and make sure that we have one entry of goods into, the, into this country. We have also taxpayer service charter. This clearly spells out the rights and application of taxpayer and the timelines whereby you are supposed to be served in. And awareness creation, we normally do our own awareness creation, the general public, and also to our staff on matters to do with ethics and integrity. And we conduct staff investigation and tax evaders, and we enforce those laws in accordance to KRA code of conduct. And lastly, we have KRA anti-corruption policies, and these policies, such as gift policy and corruption policy, we have carry high whistle policy and conflict of interest policy. So when you talk about carry gift policy, it is actually a framework we use in fighting corruption and we draw it from our Kenyan constitution. We draw it from various legal, we have legal provisions that help us fight corruption. We have gift, gift, uh, gift policy. In KRA, we don't encourage or we don't allow our staff, our staff to accept gift or get money or any donation from our stakeholders. So this is an effort to make sure that we cap corruption. We have also KRA IUS on policy whereby anyone can report you, uh, through our internet. And in this platform, in this platform, somebody can report without victimization, it will not conceal or you, your identity will not be shown. And then we have the conflict of interest policy, whereby at times in our assignment, a staff may think or may feel that yeah, he or she has competing interest in executing the duties. So that staff is supposed to declare conflict of interest. As a nation, we have values that guide us that were entrenched in our 2010 constitution, Article 10, Section 1. So as care also, we have also make sure that we implement these values. All these are in our efforts to make sure that we have ethical environment. So we have the 17 national values, as you can see from the screen, and our expectation, what we expect from you is that you pay tax voluntarily, you respect the rule of law, you participate in decision making, you do the right thing at the right time when no one is watching, and you be accountable, accountable for actions and also in management of public resources when we have an opportunity. So lastly, we have various uh, ways or uh, forms of reporting corruption or any other malpractice. We believe here yeah, that there are three people who can actually promote corruption. The one who gives out pride and the one who receives and the one who witness. So if we can join arms together, we will achieve the best for this country and for this authority. So those are the various forms and we can report corruption. We have our email, you can see our email, cic at kra.co.ke, you can report corruption. You can also walk in to 26th floor in Times Tower here in Nairobi and or any other care office, you report corruption or you write to us, you write a letter to Commissioner General, that is the postal address, or you can also give us a call. We have a toll free whereby it is free. You can make a call free. Uh, uh, you can write those numbers. And then lastly, we have what we call iWhistle. iWhistle is actually a web-based anonymous reporting system whereby it will not show your identity. We are interested in the information you are giving, you are giving us. And from there, we'll do investigation. And in this one, if you give us information, and that information will lead us to recover, maybe somebody who have the tax. We will reward you with 5% of the tax recovered up to a maximum of 5 million. And lastly, I want to encourage all of us that we report on bribery, concealment, abuse of power, conflict of interest, fraud or diversion of goods and tax evasion. And you are informed the information that you will give us we will treat with utmost confidentiality. Thank you very much, Brenda.
Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Nicole. Please, let's appreciate him. I pressed him for time and told him that we have very few minutes to listen to the parameters and the mechanisms that KRA has put in place to curb corruption. Thank you for encouraging him. Let's appreciate him. I know that uh, during our other sensitization, thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for the hand claps. Thank you for the comments on the chat box. Uh, in our forthcoming sensitizations that are coming, Willie Sobat, thank you for that thumbs up. Uh, let's appreciate him and thank him. Uh, he's in a very critical department in KRA, and it is called the Intelligence and Strategic Office. And uh, during our subsequent presentations, what we will do is that we will give him and the team more time to elaborate for us uh, this uh, systems that are actually in place for us to do corruption reporting. Miriam, thank you very much. Uh, so much for your feedback and for today's session, Mr. Nicholas. Uh, wherever you are, I don't want to, ju to just go. I want to give you an opportunity uh, to give us your closing remarks. You have been very economical with the use of your time, and we are very grateful for that. Uh, are you able to unmute? Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you so much. Maybe you can give us your closing remarks. Yes. Yeah, and to urge Kenyans or all taxpayers eh, that let us be very ethical, let us report all forms of corruption, any malpractice in the maybe anonymous in the eye whistle, or you can even visit us, you can write to us, and this will achieve all of us will achieve the fight against corruption. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Nicholas. We appreciate you together with uh, your team at ISNO. And indeed, we are going to work together, especially this uh, October, which is our taxpayers month. We have planned uh, more sessions for, for you every Thursday from 11 a.m. We are going to be having such interactive and informative sessions uh, for you. Uh, thank you so much for the feedback. Peter Motuko, we need, we again need an E-Teams training. Thank you. Thank you for that. It's like you read our plans. We already have an E-Teams training that is scheduled to happen in the course of this month. So keep tuned to our social uh, media pages. We'll be giving you more details right there. I want to take an opportunity. Uh, Felix Munyo, and who is clapping for the moderator? <laughs> yes, uh, Felix, I have not seen your hand claps. Where are they? Well, it's not under duress, but thank you so much for appreciating us today. I hope the session was informative. What we are out to do as KRA is give you our taxpayer an opportunity, not only to be informed, but also to uh, share your sentiments, your pain points, your questions, and we will do our level best to actually address uh, as many of those concerns as possible. Thank you so much, Rose Gishohi. I can see your comments on the chat box together. Uh, with, uh, let me see, Cherono Salome, thank you so much. Your feedback is very much appreciated. Charity Kiragu, thank you so much. I see, um, let me just use this scroller, yes. Thank you, hometown, Willie Sobat, thank you so much. I want us to appreciate a team that you might not hear or even get to see, but are doing a very good job behind the scenes. That is the KRA TV team. They put together the live stream that uh, has been going on from 11 a.m. Uh, we appreciate the team, Sam. Uh, we appreciate you, Sharon, Judy, and uh, those that are in absentia, the entire team. Thank you so much for putting this together and making it uh, possible. Uh, as I leave, I would like us to please like our pages, subscribe and share. Uh, KRA TV, uh, we can actually post it. We can post it. I'll ask Sam to help me post the link once again. You can find it there. Please like and subscribe because this is our repository. Today's training with the questions that were very well answered by our presenter, Miriam, are available for your review after the session under KRA TV. So you can go to KRA TV on YouTube and also KRA TV on our KRA website now. I think uh, that's it for today. We have spent quite some bit of time, but I hope it has been worth your time. For those that have been engaging us very actively on our YouTube page, the likes of Peter Motuko, Felix Munua, uh, we've seen the likes of uh, Sarah, 
and also the banter and many more. Maureen Waidera, thank you so much. Maureen, in fact, says that it was such an informative presentation and Miriam, uh, presentation with Miriam, uh, with a great moderator. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maureen Waidera, for the compliments. We surely appreciate you. Uh, for our panelists, I just want to pass my appreciation to you, Mr. Nicholas Kimutai. Thank you so much for taking your time and also our presenter under care tax amnesty, that is Madam Miriam Asharia. Thank you so much, Miriam. They'd want to see your face one last time as you wave goodbye to them. Ah, I think you have already signed out. No problem, that's okay. From us, let's close with a word of prayer and then we call it a day. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's session being the very first one and uh, tax talks in our month. That is our taxpayers month of October. We thank you for making it a great success. We pray for the ones that are coming in the future that they will just be as informative as uh, today's session. Thank you for our dear Kenyans, our taxpayers, those that have stayed through today's session. May you bless them and the, and the businesses and the works of their hands. As we go for lunch, I pray that you dismiss us with your peace. We thank you for it is in Jesus name we prayed. Amen. So we can exit. Thank you for the hand claps. You can exit at your own pleasure. Damka accountants, thank you so much. Uh, Miriam is here. Uh, let me give her an opportunity to say kwaheri. <laughs> Miriam, I know you are here. You can wave goodbye to our taxpayers. Okay, have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you for your time. We appreciate your patience. And all your questions, we are available to respond to any questions going forward. And we look forward to another engagement just like this to assist you meet your tax obligations. Thank you and bye once again. All right. The session is officially closed. <laughs>